morning, boys and girls. It's Teacher Cat. Happy Sunday! Welcome back to Sunday School. It's great to share our time together today. Discover the wonders of God's Word together. Before we begin, shall we start with a word of prayer? I would like you to bow your head, hold your hands, close your eyes, and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for today that we are able to share some time together to explore and learn about your word. Please help us to have open minds, attentive eyes, listening ears, and receptive hearts as we explore today's story about obeying you always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Fantastic. I do. Before we go to today's Bible story, let's play a little game first. This game is going to test your observation skills. I call it I spy with my little eye. Shall we get started? I'm going to give you one minute to find something around you which matches the color shown on the screen. Okay, first, let's find something blue. Okay, your one minute starts now. seconds to go. Last 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What did you find? These are some things that I found around me that were blue. I saw blue highlighter, a blue pencil, and I found my blue pair of jeans. Next, shall we find something red, yellow? Let's go! to find anything yet? We're halfway through the timer.
halfway through. spicy food. How about you? And a pumpkin of strawberries. Today's Bible story is called Obey God Always and is taken from the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 22 verse 10 to chapter 24 verse 25. And today we are going to find out about a man who followed good advice and obeyed God for a time. But then he followed bad advice and turned away from God for the rest of his life. At that time, both Judah and Israel had many evil kings. When King Ahaziah of Judah died, his mother, Athaliah, wanted to be queen. So she ordered all her grandsons be killed so she could rule. However, one of her grandsons, a one-year-old child called Joash, escaped the killings. His aunt, Jehoshiba, the wife of Jehoiada the priest saved Joash by keeping him hidden in one of the rooms of the temple for six years. When Joash became seven, Jehoiada carried out a plan to make the young boy king. Protected by soldiers, he crowned Joash as king by anointing his head with oil. Everyone shouted, Long live the king! Long live the king! Hearing the noise, Athaliah hurried to the temple. When she saw Joash, she tore her clothes and shouted, Treason! Soldiers were ordered to lead her out of the temple to be executed. Jehoiada, the priest, had the boy King Joash and the people of Judah make a covenant with the Lord. They promised again that they would love and obey the Lord God. Then the people went to the temple of Baal and smashed it down. They destroyed the altars and broke the idols into pieces. The false priests of Baal were killed in front of the altars. After several years, Joash decided to repair the Lord's temple. He ordered priests to collect money for making the repairs. However, many years passed and no repair work was done. Finally, Joash decided he must do something. So he had a large box placed by the temple gate. When the people came to offer sacrifices, they were encouraged to put their gift of money into the box. Hmm, this seems a lot like offering that we give on Sunday, isn't it? The money collected was used to pay the carpenters and stone masons and metal workers to repair the temple. Before long, the temple was looking as clean and beautiful as before. As long as Jehoiada the priest was alive, sacrifices were made in the temple every day. But when he died, the people stopped going to the temple and turned back to their evil ways. They began worshipping the goddess Asherah, a foreign god. The Lord sent Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, to warn King Joash. He announced, 
As you have forsaken the Lord, he has forsaken you. This made Joash very angry, and he ordered Zechariah to be taken out and stoned to death. Later that year, the Syrian army attacked Judah and Jerusalem. King Joash was wounded in the battle. While recovering from his wounds in bed, he was murdered by two men who had been friends of Zechariah. And that is the end of the story of King Joash. So, in spite of Joash's rebellion, God used him to preserve the family line leading to Jesus. So, here is Joash, and that's Jesus Christ. Joash was the great, 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 lots of greats grandfather of Jesus. This story again shows us how much we need the one who would do God's will when he was young and continue to do God's will always. Only one person has ever done that. Do you know who it is? It's Jesus. Now, let's answer some of these questions. How old was Joash when he was hidden away? I'm going to give you 15 seconds to answer this question. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. He was one year old. Do you get it right? <laughs> Next question is, why did Queen Athaliah want to kill all her grandsons? Uh, this is so simple. I should just give you 10 seconds, okay? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. She wanted to be queen. Was that your answer too? The third question is, what do you think would have happened to Joash if he had continued to obey God? Hmm, this is a little bit tough, so I'll give you 20 seconds, alright? If you're not sure, you can ask your mommy and daddy too. Let's see if they know. 10 seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. God would have blessed him instead of having to punish him. So even though God loved Joash, he is a just God and he hates sin. So when Joash and his people started to rebel against God and worship other gods, God had to punish him. So now I want you to think, in what ways can we obey God? How about when we listen to our father and mother and we love our parents? We can also do our homework diligently and set a good example for our classmates and friends in school. We can also offer a helping hand and a hold our friend's hand and comfort them when they feel sad or they need some consolation. We can also love our siblings and give them lots of hugs and cuddles. So today's memory verse is, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Psalm 23, verse 1, 2, 3. Shall we say it together again? Now, let's clap together as we say it. Psalm 23. 
verse. One, two, three. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Do try your best to think this verse over and remember it, okay? Commit it to memory. So now it's time for our first catechism. Question 36 says, What is that sinful nature which we inherited from Adam called? It's called original sin. Next, what does every sin deserve? Every sin deserves the wrath and the curse of God. Question 38, can anyone go to heaven with this sinful nature? No, our hearts must be changed before we can be fit for heaven. What is a change of heart called? It's called regeneration. Question 40. Who can change a sinner's heart? The Holy Spirit alone. Okay, now let us close with a word of prayer. Same thing as before. I want you to bow your head, fold your hands, close your eyes, and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your assurance that we are always on the right path when we follow the teaching of the Bible. And please help us to rely on your word for advice and direction. Amen. Now, let's stand up for doxology. One, two, three. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you again next Sunday. Bye. Stay safe.